NutraSweet is a biological weapon. It's an MGM, aka a Monsanto, genetically modified, monster. It's killing your children, and it's killing you. Aspartame fraud. Morkula.com. Read about the history of aspartame, as well the dangers associated with this toxic artificial sweetener. Aspartame, history of fraud and deception. Today we have NutraSweet, which is widely used in a plethora of consumables, despite a demonstrated neurological reaction in some people. In February 1996, it was decided to also use the product name Benevia. It is estimated that as many as 20 million people cannot metabolize phenylalanine, and this inability is genetically inherited by children. The inability to metabolize phenylalanine can lead to mental retardation in children. This means a risk of retardation for millions of children. A multi-billion dollar enterprise Prize. This substance is said to be refined from natural substances. Like other refined substances, it represents a health threat to the general public. No long-term studies have been performed to evaluate the physiological effects of this substance, yet the public is led to believe it is absolutely safe. Technically, the chemical is called aspartame, and it was once on a Pentagon list of biowarfare chemicals submitted to Congress. 1. Aspartame is in over 4,000 products worldwide and is consumed by over 200 million people in the United States alone. What follows is a skeletal examination of the chronology related to aspartame. A more detailed chronology is given later in this chapter based on information provided to us by the Aspartame Consumer Safety Network. Aspartame is produced by G.D. Searle Company, founded in 1888 and located in Skokie, Illinois. Searle is now owned by others. It is about 200 times sweeter than the refined sugar that it is meant to replace, and it is known to erode intelligence and affect short-term memory. It is essentially a chemical weapon designed to impact populations en masse. It is an RDNA derivative made from two amino acids, L-phenylalanine, L-aspartic acid and methanol. Originally discovered during a search for an ulcer drug in 19 1966, it was approved by the FDA in 1974 as a food additive. Approval was followed by a retraction based on demonstrated public concern over the fact that the substance produced brain tumors in rats. According to the 1974 FDA task force set up to examine aspartame and GD Searle, we have uncovered serious deficiencies in Searle's operations and practices, which undermine the basis for reliance on Searle's integrity in conducting high-quality animal research to accurately determine the toxic potential of its products. The task force report concluded with the recommendation that GD Searle should face a grand jury to identify more particularly the nature of the violations and to identify all those responsible. 2. In 1976, an FDA task force brought into question all of G.D. Searle's aspartame testing procedures conducted between 1967 and 1975. The final FDA report noted faulty and fraudulent product testing, knowingly misrepresented product testing, knowingly misrepresented findings, and instances of irrelevant animal research. In other words, illegal criminal activity. Understandably scared, Searle officials sought to suppress the FDA findings and obstruct justice. They turned to Nixon and Ford administration operative Donald Rumsfeld and elected him chairman of the Searle organization. In 1977, the Wall Street Journal detailed the fact that Rumsfeld made efforts to mend fences by asking what Searle could do in the face of the changes. Also in 1977, Dr. Adrian Gross, a pathologist working for the FDA, uncovered evidence that G.D. Searle might have committed criminal fraud in withholding adverse data on aspartame. 3. The FDA requested that U.S. Attorney Samuel Skinner be hired to investigate Searle's aspartame testing procedures in January 1977. Samuel Skinner was the federal prosecutor responsible for convincing the grand jury to investigate whether Searle willfully and criminally withheld data that cast doubt on the safety of aspartame. In February 1977, Skinner met with Searle attorneys at the Chicago law firm of Sydney and Austin. Suddenly, newly elected President Carter announced that Skinner would not remain in office, and Skinner thereafter announced that he would be hired by Sydney and Austin. Obviously, Skinner then had to recuse himself from the Searle prosecution. The case was taken over by U.S. Attorney William Conlon, who essentially sat on the case, despite complaints from the Justice Department, which was urging that a grand jury be convened to prosecute Searle Company for falsifying NutraSweet test data. Failing to perform his duty, Conlon also joined Searle's law firm in January 1979. 
Skinner's defection from the FDA might have been prompted by the results of the review of the Searle studies. David Hatton, Deputy Director of the FDA Division of Toxicological Review and Evaluation, concedes that anyone reading the original FDA investigation reports is likely to be shocked by what they reveal. He says that the ensuing review of the Searle studies, in which he was involved from the time of his arrival in 1978, was one of the most thorough in the agency history. It included an unprecedented hearing before a public board of inquiry composed of experts from outside the agency. Arthur Hayes, Jr., then commissioner of the FDA appointed by Reagan, agreed with Searle and the FDA's Bureau of Foods, now the Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, that an appropriate analysis of the data showed no significant increases in tumor incidence in rats exposed to aspartame at DKP, one of the breakdown products of aspartame. The board of inquiry rejected concerns that aspartame's components could cause neurological damage. Four. In 1981, under pressure from the soft drink lobby, FDA Commissioner Hayes approved the initial use of aspartame in dry foods and as a tabletop sweetener, discounting public complaints as anecdotal and ignoring three FDA scientists, five, who voiced the fact that there were serious questions concerning brain tumor tests after having done an in-house study. Hayes was widely profiled as a man who believed that approval for new drugs and additives was too slow because the FDA demanded too much information. Hayes also ignored the fact that the biased scientific studies paid for by Searle were faulty. 6. After leaving the FDA, Hayes took the post of senior medical consultant for the public relations firm retained by Searle. 7. A subsequent inquiry found no impropriety. In July 1983 it was approved for use in soft drinks in the United States, followed three months later by approval in Britain by the Ministry of Agriculture. All this was done despite the fact that the Department of Defense knew that aspartame was neurotoxic and harmful to human health. These facts were deliberately suppressed by the government. It is also interesting that in 1981 FDA scientist Drive, Robert Condon, in an internal government document, said, I do not concur that aspartame has been shown to be safe with respect to the induction of brain tumors. All safety was thrown aside because of pressure from Searle. Considering the connections the drug companies have to the medical and intelligence community, it would not be surprising that there were other factors involved in the pressure to adopt aspartame into the diet of the population. In 1984, the Arizona Department of Health began testing soft drinks to ascertain the level of toxic deterioration by products in soft drinks. It was determined that soft drinks stored in elevated temperatures promoted more rapid deterioration of aspartame into poisonous methyl alcohol, methanol. The FDA decided to ignore these results. Public complaints about the effects of aspartame began to come in. People complained of headaches, dizziness, vomiting, nausea, blurred vision, seizures, convulsions and a host of other reactions to aspartame. Also in 1984, the Centers for Disease Control made the fraudulent announcement that no serious, widespread, side effects of aspartame had been found. It was an outright lie, and this announcement was quickly followed by another from PepsiCo that it was dropping saccharin and adopting aspartame as the sweetener at all its diet drinks. Others followed suit, despite the January 1984 broadcast on CBS Nightly News where the chief scientist for the FDA task force investigating Searle publicly stated that Searle company officials made Made deliberate decisions to cloak aspartame's toxic effects. When a human consumes NutraSweet, it breaks down above 85 degrees not only into its constituent amino acids, but into methanol, which further breaks down into formaldehyde, which is carcinogenic, 8, and very toxic, as well as formic acid and a brain tumor agent called dictopiperazina, DKP. In a meek attempt to ward off further public inquiry, the FDA in 1984 announced that no evidence has been found to establish that aspartame's methanol byproduct reaches toxic levels. This was a direct lie, since Medical World News reported in 1978, six years earlier, then the methanol content of aspartame is 1,000 times greater than most foods under FDA control. Furthermore, the methanol in aspartame is free methanol, which is never found in nature. Methanol in nature is always accompanied by ethanol and other compounds which mitigate the methanol when introduced into the body. In 1985, Searle Company was bought by Monsanto, the maker of other insidious substances that managed to find their way into human food, including bovine growth hormone BGH. Senator Metzenbaum, commenting on the FDA relative to the aspartame issue in 1985 said, The FDA is content to have Searle conduct all safety tests on aspartame. That's absurd. Supreme Court collusion in aspartame cover-up Clarence Thomas, former Monsanto lawyer,
In 1986, the Washington Post reported that the Supreme Court refused to consider arguments that the FDA had not followed proper procedures in approving aspartame, despite arguments that the product may cause brain damage. Supreme Court obstructing justice. Since Bush nominated Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, is a former attorney for Monsanto, 9, it is unlikely that hundreds of millions of people will find redress. There are also indications of ties between Monsanto and elements in the CIA. University of Illinois fraudulent study on aspartame. In August of 1987, the University of Illinois, a recipient of funding from Monsanto, issued a study exonerating aspartame of causing seizures in laboratory animals. The fact that they were paid by Monsanto automatically invalidates the results. U.S. Senate hearings in 1987 showed that G.D. Searle used psychological strategy to get regulators at the FDA into a yes-saying habit to bring them into a subconscious spirit of participation. Dot opening square bracket, 10. More than half of 69 medical researchers polled by the FDA in 1987 said they were concerned about aspartame safety. 11. FDA ignores complaints of neurological symptoms. In 1989, the FDA received over 4,000 complaints from people who described adverse reactions. Because the FDA conveniently lists aspartame as a food additive, it removes the legal requirement for adverse effect reporting to any federal agency and the necessity for safety monitoring processes. Research also indicates that aspartame, when combined with glutamine products such as MSG, widely used in foods, increase the likelihood of brain damage occurring in children. 12. Aspartame affecting airline pilots. Some of the more interesting developments in 1989 surfaced in the Palm Beach Post on October 14, where an article by Dr. H.J. Robert described several recent aircraft accidents involving confusion and aberrant pilot behavior caused by ingestion of products containing aspartame. 13. Soft drink makers were notified of this problem in 1991. It is interesting to note that after Samuel Skinner left Sydney and Austin, Searle's law firm, he was appointed Secretary of Transportation. Hence, he was in charge of the FAA, just in time to head off complaints from pilots affected by aspartame. His wife was employed by Sydney and Austin. Later as George Bush's chief of staff in 1991, during the Gulf War, he was in a position to head off all inquiries relative to aspartame, no matter where they were directed, to the FDA, FAA or Department of Defense. This constitutes criminal negligence and racketeering. George Bush, of course, was an ex-director of the Central Intelligence Agency. British News, Nutrasweet Tests Faked. On July 20, 1990, an article in the national British newspaper The Guardian, entitled Nutrasweet Test Results Faked, revealed that the British government had finally been persuaded to review the safety of aspartame after receiving a dossier of evidence highlighting its potential dangers. According to The Guardian, the dossier alleged that laboratory tests were falsified, tumors were removed from laboratory animals and animals were restored to life in laboratory records. 14. The dossier against Nutrasweet was compiled by Eric Millstone, a lecturer at the Science Policy Research Unit at Sussex University and author of two books on food additives. It was based on thousands of pages of evidence, much of which was obtained under the Freedom of Information Act. The COT, Committee on Toxicity, was at the time looking into consumption of artificial sweeteners and did not possess the key documents covering alleged mishandling of the safety tests which Millstone was asked to provide. The British Ministry of Agriculture and Department of Health have never revealed the evidence upon which approval was given in England for the distribution of aspartame, maintaining that these are matters of commercial confidence. The British government does not testing of its own but relies on safety tests provided by the manufacturer, which of course constitutes a conflict of interest. The 1990 article quoted the British Department of Health as saying, Nutrasweet is not a health hazard on the available evidence, but people do suffer idiosyncratic reactions to food additives. Interestingly, it was pointed 14 members of the Committee on Toxicity have direct or indirect links with the artificial sweetener industry, according to David Clark, the Labour Party agriculture spokesman, who requested a parliamentary answer to address questions of conflict of interest. Aspartame is also sold in England under the product name Candoril. In 1990, the market for aspartame in England was estimated at 800 million pounds. Dosing of the military in the Gulf War. 
During the 1991 Gulf War, all military personnel were provided free supplies of aspartame-laced soft drinks together with experimental vaccines, nerve gas antidotes and personal insecticides. They were also treated to direct biochemical warfare compounds. The result is Gulf War Syndrome, which is communicable and deadly, and 50,000 military personnel and their dependents are wasting away before our eyes. Criminal negligence. Of course. Criminal conspiracy. Yes. Genocide. Probably. We're waiting to see. Aspartame alters brain chemicals that affect behavior. Independent tests on animals have shown that aspartame alters brain chemicals that also affect behavior. The chemical nature of aspartame was also shown to defeat its own alleged purpose as a diet aid, since high doses instill a craving for calorie-laden carbohydrates. Then, the aspartame-carbohydrate combination further increases the effect of aspartame on the brain. 15. Fraudulent claims of aspartame as a diet aid. Interestingly, even the American Cancer Society confirmed that users of artificial sweeteners gained more weight than those who didn't use the products, further undermining the supposed purpose for the existence of aspartame in the food. 16. Haven't we heard this kind of criminal fraud before? The major selling point of aspartame is as a diet aid, and it has been demonstrated that the use of this product actually causes people to consume more food. Normally, when a significant quantity of carbohydrate are consumed, serotonin levels rise in the brain. This is manifested as a relaxed feeling after a meal. When aspartame is ingested with carbohydrates, such as having a sandwich with a diet drink, aspartame causes the brain to cease production of serotonin, meaning that the feeling of having had enough never materializes. You then eat more foods, many containing aspartame, and the cycle continues. Monsanto's profit from its Nutrasweet division was $993 million in 1990. Governments continue suppression and cover-up on aspartame. In 1991, the National Institutes of Health, 17, listed 167 symptoms and reasons to avoid the use of aspartame, but today it is a multi-million dollar business that contributes to the degeneration of the human population, as well as the deliberate suppression of overall intelligence, short-term memory, 18, and the added contribution as a carcinogenic environmental cofactor. The FDA and the Centers for Disease Control continue to receive a stream of complaints from the population about aspartame. It is the only chemical warfare weapon available in mass quantities should keep the coneheads happy on the grocery shelf and promoted in the media. It has also been indicated that women with an intolerance for phenylalanina, one of the components of aspartame, may give birth to infants with as much as a 15% drop in intelligence level if they habitually consume products containing this dangerous substance. 19. FAA Collusion in Suppression of Facts on Aspartame the March 1995 issue of the Pacific Flyer published a pro-aspartame article in which it stated, the Federal Aviation Administration conducted its own cognitive research and, according to experts, found no contraindications that would prevent pilots, or anyone, from ingesting aspartame. This flies in the face of consistent reports from pilots who maintain they have suffered severe and dangerous repercussions in the air after drinking soft drinks containing aspartame. Virtually every time, symptoms disappeared when aspartame-laced drinks were discontinued. 20. Over 600 pilots have reported this problem. FDA findings on aspartame remain based on fake tests. So, the fake SERL tests remain. The FDA bases its findings on the fake SERL tests, and the Journal of the American Medical Association, examining the FDA findings, based on the fake SERL tests, announced the consumption of aspartame poses no health risk for most people. SERL officials argue that the use of aspartame as an artificial sweetener has been officially approved not only by the FDA, but by foreign regulatory agencies in the World Health Organization, based on SERL-sponsored aspartame research, not independently conducted tests. Symptoms of aspartame intoxication, minimal to severe. The symptoms of aspartame intoxication include severe headaches, nausea, vertigo, insomnia, loss of control of limbs, blurred vision, blindness, memory loss, slurred speech, mild to severe depression often reaching suicidal levels, hyperactivity, gastrointestinal disorders, seizures, skin lesions, rashes, anxiety attacks, muscle and joint pain, numbness, mood changes, loss of energy, menstrual cramps out of cycle, hearing loss or ringing in the ears, loss of change of taste, and 
symptoms similar to those in a heart attack. In addition, aspartic acid chelates combines with chromium, which is a necessary element for proper operation of the thyroid gland. People who consume large quantities of aspartame may end up with a false diagnosis of Graves' disease and suffer allopathic irradiation of their thyroid gland for no reason. Complaints about aspartame represent 80 to 85 percent of all food complaints registered with the FDA. More than 6,000 complaints have been made concerning the effects of aspartame. 30 independent doctors and scientists have conducted research on the adverse effects of aspartame or have compiled supporting data against its use. The use of Nutrasweet registered sign or equal registered sign should be seriously curtailed or stopped. Aspartame use part of planetary biomedical genocide. The fact that tons of aspartame is pumped into the world population each year, knowingly and deliberately, especially with the historical and documented record of fraud and misrepresentation, constitutes a conspiracy of the highest order, as well as criminal negligence. The rewards of continued use are increased profits for the medical and pharmaceutical industries and chemical companies who produce aspartame and treat people suffering from the effect of...